New York is America's first battleground in the war against COVID-19. The infection rate of the virus here has been more ferocious than anywhere in the world so far. This is different. This is bigger. This is worse. This is young, sick people. This is high volumes of people. The city is in shock. Makeshift morgues are being built. Uh, I'm an ICU doctor and I don't really scare that easily, but this is scary. And more and more, the stories of the dead include the young and the seemingly healthy. We had a couple, uh, a husband and a wife that both passed away. Uh, lots of devastating, horrible stories uh, of people um, whose whole families are taken out. They were at a party together and the three of people in the same family have passed away. So uh, a, a hundred devastating stories that I could tell you. Dr. Mangala Narasimhan is head of intensive care at six major hospitals in New York. The death toll here is 700 plus and counting. Over 50,000 cases, with hospital admissions increasing by an incredible 40% every day. Understanding that uh, a lot of people that we saw today probably won't make it through this. Can you please describe to me the scenes that confront you as you walk through the doors of the hospitals you, you work at at the moment? Just the sheer numbers of extremely sick people. We have numbers of people on ventilators that we normally would never see. And the challenge is just the volume. And they're not simple patients. They're very sick and require a lot of care. Do you have the equipment you need? Do you have the personnel you need? So our numbers are basically doubling every three days. Uh, we've been able to keep up with it so far. The challenge is that once they go on the ventilators, they stay on for a very, very long time. At some point, there will be an issue with having enough of everything the way things are going right now in New York. How soon do you expect that to be? Our prediction is two or three weeks uh, if we keep at this rate. But there are already shortages at another New York hospital. This is the emergency ward at Elmhurst Hospital in Queens, as its director, Dr Colleen Smith, pleads for more ventilators. Today is kind of getting worse and worse. We are right now scrambling to try to get a few additional ventilators or even CPAP machines. If we could get CPAP machines, we could free up ventilators for patients who need them. Outside, a truck. Now the hospital's makeshift morgue. We had to get a refrigerated truck to store the bodies of patients who are dying leaders in various offices, from the president to the head of health and hospitals, saying things like, we're going to be fine, everything's fine. And from our perspective, everything is not fine. Everyone in my group is actually stunned at how hard this is and how we take care of very sick patients all the time, but not like this, not this number. But perhaps the most disturbing, most terrifying aspect of this New York outbreak is the age and health of its victims. Tell me about your patients. You, you know, what, what type of people are presenting with these symptoms? Who, you know, who, who, who is being targeted by this virus? So that's a very good question. I think there's a mis misperception out there that this is targeting older people with a lot of medical problems. That is not what we are seeing in our hospitals. Our hospitals have an average age of 60, and I have many 20, 30, 40-year-olds, many of them, very, very sick on ventilators with no medical problems. So the majority of them are younger people uh, with a few or no medical problems. So the misperception of this can't hurt me because I'm young, I think is a dangerous one. Is it a misperception or are you actually experiencing something different to many parts of the world? I don't know the answer to that. I, I, I can only say what I'm seeing. Um, the patients that we have that are younger are the ones that are getting better with time, but not all of them. Um, many of them have not made it. So uh, I don't know the answer. I don't know if this is a different strain that's more virulent and, it, and with younger people or if it's just the population that it's hitting. Um, I don't know the answer to that question. 
We are watching COVID-19's unstoppable advance across the world. The desperate battles being waged in hospitals from Italy to New York. A war that is only just beginning in Australia. And if this goes on for a month or two or three or five, like it did in China, and we're already this strained, we don't have what we need. I don't really care if I get in trouble for speaking to the media. I want people to know that this is bad. People are dying. We don't have the tools that we need in the emergency department and in the hospital to take care of them. And And it's really hard. As you face each day going into work, uh, do you ever feel overwhelmed? Yes, all the time. I feel like I wish this would end. I wish it would slow down. I, I worry every day about ventilators and supplies. Um, my colleagues do the same. Everybody's tired, and I'm hoping that we see a slowdown soon. Um, every day we worry. I'm worried. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.